Hello everyone, this is CypherDeck, and today we're going to continue on uh, Tony Takatani, and I wanted to also mention this uh, movie that I watched last night, and I'm going to say his name incorrectly, it's Sunji Iwa, I believe is how, his name, uh, how it's said, uh, he created or wrote and directed, I believe, uh, The Case of Hanan Alice. And you can actually, um, you can actually watch the, a live version, but there is also a, um, a cartoon or animated style version as well. What I th thought was really interesting about this, and this is something that I was thinking about with, uh, Shizuburo and his stalwartness and the way he presented himself with life, um, in the last, um, episode was that there are two girls, and they are always riding the train to go to school. And they notice this um, this American and this um, this kid who's always reading, and the American is always pulling him back from uh, walls or keeping him from hitting things and things like that. And um, one of the girls, I believe it's Hana, ends up kind of following him and taking pictures of him and at one point in the story he hits his head uh and you could tell he hit it pretty hard because of the way he is stumbling afterwards he can't really uh remember anything for a second and then um and then hannah goes up to him ask him if he's okay and he says uh, who who are you and uh she's like you don't remember me <laughs> and uh and she says uh something along the lines of um uh you told me you loved me and of course this never happened and she's saying uh that he has amnesia and goes to the doctor and through the whole movie he is trying to figure out what's going on but he has this stalwartness about him it's almost he's talking and he has this really uh, Japanese deep voice, but he, um, he, he, you can barely see that his mouth is moving. That's kind of how I feel Shizuburo is whenever he's talking about these things that happened to him in his life. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's a really interesting film. It's um, English uh, subtitles, uh, but it's a Japanese movie. And if you... Get a chance, check it out. It's a two-hour movie. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, there's one you can watch uh, as the cartoon, or you can watch the live one. And the one that has sub, uh, like, um, has uh, subtitles, is it has the stars. You just maximize it and then zoom in, and you'll be able to watch the movie pretty well. But uh, it's a really, it's a really good uh, movie. Anyway kind of got me thinking about about this and um anyway we'll go ahead and get rid of that yep all right so here we go uh if you remember last time shizuburo uh, before or during world war ii he had moved to china and uh he played as a, a, a jazz musician and he uh when the war was over, I, I this is where I kind of gotten got confused. It was either the Chinese had put him in a concentration camp or in a camp because of the fact that he was Japanese and that was the only reason, or that he uh, he was sent back to Japan and then he was put into a camp there because of the fact that he didn't fight for his country. But the thing was, is at the beginning of the story, he it said that he is um, he is made to leave the country because of something dealing with a girl. So that's kind of where we left off. Uh, let's go ahead and continue. In 1947, he married a distant cousin on his mother's side. They happened to run into each other one day on the street and over tea shared news of their relatives and talked about the old days. Before long, they ended up living together, probably because she had become pregnant. At least, at least that was the way that Tony, uh, Tony Takatani heard it from his father. 
His mother was a pretty girl and quiet, but not very healthy. She gave birth to Tony uh, the year after she was married, and three days later, she died. Just like that. And just like that, she was cremated quickly and quietly. She had experienced no great complications, no suffering to speak of. She just faded into nothingness, as if someone had gone backstage and flicked a switch. Suzuburo Takatani had no idea how he was supposed to feel about this. He was a stranger to such emotions he could not seem to grasp any grasp with any precision what death was all about nor could he come to any conclusion regarding what this particular death meant for him all he could do was swallow it whole as a fate 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 yeah it's fate a comply and i think um be- that word means that um, it has happened and you can't do anything about it. It's uh, it's accomplished, but it's it's a it's uh, meaning that it's not meaning that you accomplish something. It means that something has happened and it can't be reversed. And so he came to feel that some kind of flat disc like thing had lodged itself in his chest. What, what it was or why it was there, he couldn't say. It's called love, isn't it? Isn't that what it is to lose someone and, and love and you have knots in your stomach and you don't know why it is? That, that's what that would be, I would think. Uh, but apparently he can't perceive it. The object simply stayed in place and blocked him from thinking any more about what had happened. He thought about uh, he thought about nothing at all for a full week after his wife died, and even forgot about the baby that he left at the hospital. The major took Shizuburo under his wing. I'm sorry, let me <laughs> move that down. The major took Shizuburo under his wing and did all he could to console him. He they drank together at the base nearly every day. You gotta get a hold of yourself, the major would tell Shizuburo. The one thing absolutely, uh, the one thing you absolutely have to do is bring that boy upright. The words meant nothing to Shizuburo, who merely nodded in silence. Hey, I know, the major added suddenly one day. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Let me read that again. Hey, I know, the major added, suddenly one day, why don't you let me be the boy's grandfather? I'll give him a name. Oh, Shizuburo thought. He had forgotten to give the baby a name. The major uh, suggested his own first name, Tony. Tony was no name for a Japanese child, of course, but such a thought never crossed the major's mind. When Shizuburo got home, he wrote the name Tony Takatani on a, on a piece of paper and stuck it to the wall. He, started, uh, he stared at it for the next several days. Tony Takatani. Not bad. Not bad. The American occupation of Japan was probably going to last a while, he thought. And an American-style name just might come ha- come handy for the kid at some point. For the child himself, though, living with a name like that was not much fun. The other kids at school called him ha- called him a half breed, and whenever he told people his name, they responded with a look of puzzlement or distaste. Some people thought it was a bad joke, and others reacted with anger. For certain people, coming face to face with a child called Tony Takatani was all it took to reopen old wounds. Such experience served only to close the boy off from the world. He never made any close friends, but this did not 
calls him pain. He found it natural to be by himself. It was kind of... It was kind... It was a kind of premise of living. Premise? Uh, yeah, of living. His father was always traveling with the band. And when Tony was little, a housekeeper had come to take care of him during the day. But by the time he was in his last years at elementary school, he could manage without her. He cooked for himself, locked up at night, and slept alone. This seemed preferable to having someone fussing over him all the time. Shizuburo took a Tony and never married again. He had plenty of girlfriends, of course, but didn't bring any of them to the house. Like his son, he was used to taking care of himself. Father and son were not as different from each other as one might imagine, but being the kind of people they were imbued to an equal degree with a, hab uh, a habitual solitude, neither took the in um, initiative to open his heart to the other. Neither felt a need to do so. Shizuburo Takatani was not well suited to being a father, and Tony Takatani was not well suited to being a son. Tony Takatani loved to draw, and he spent hours every day shut up in his room doing just that. He especially loved to draw pictures and machines, keeping his pencil needle sharp. Who would produce? Um, he would produce clear, accurate, and highly detailed drawings of bicycles, radios, engines, and the like. If he drew a plant, he would capture every vein in every leaf. It was the only way he knew how to draw. His grades in art, unlike those in other subjects, were always outstanding, and he usually won first prize in school, uh, in school art contests. So it was perfectly natural for Tony Takatani to go from high school to art school to a career as an, an uh, illustrator. There were never any need for him to consider other possibilities. While the young people around him were um, agonizing over the path they, would, they should follow in life, he went on doing his me uh, mechanical drawings without... Is it mechanical? Yeah, mechanical drawings without a thought for anything else. And because it was a time when most young people were acting out against the establishment with, uh, with passion and violence, none of his con uh, contemporaries, con okay, contemporaries saw anything of value in his, uh, ultra uh, in his ulterior, ul, okay, you, t t uh, you, I, I know how to say it, uh, it's utilitarian. There it is. Art. His art school professor viewed his work with twisted smiles. His classmates criticized it as lacking an ideological ideological content. Tony himself could not see what was so great about their work with its ideological content. To him, it looked immature, ugly, and inaccurate. Once he graduated from college, though, everything changed for him. Thanks to the extreme particular... Oh, okay. okay, I'm sorry. Thanks to the extreme practicality of his realistic technique, Tony Takatani never had a problem finding work. No one could match the precision with which uh, he drew um, drew complicated machines and architectural uh, and architectural te texture architect architecture yes 
They took, um, they look r- realer than the real thing, everyone said. His sketches were more detailed than photographs, and they had a clarity that made any explanation of waste, um, uh, a waste of words. All of a sudden, he was the one illustrator everybody had to have, and he took on everything. From the cover of automobile magazines to without any hobbies. Wait a minute. Okay, from the cover of automobile magazines to advertising illustrations. He enjoyed the work and he made good money. Without any hobbies to drain his resources, he managed by the time he was 35 to amass a small fortune. He bought a big house in (laughs) Sedagaya. Is that how you say that? Sedagaya? An affiliate, an affluent Tokyo suburb, and he owned several apartments that brought him. Uh, rental income. His account uh, took care. Uh, his accountant took care of all the details. By the time, uh, by this point in his life, Tony took uh, Tony. I, I always want to say the last name now because they said the, the last name every time they said Shizaburo. Tony had been involved with several different women. When uh, okay, different women. He had even lived with one of them, for a short time. But he had never considered marriage, had never seen a need for it. Cooking, cleaning, and laundry he could manage for himself, and when his work um, interfered with those things, he hired a housekeeper. He never felt a desire to have children. He lacked his father's special charm, and... He had no real friends of the kind who would come come to him for advice or to confess secrets, not even one to drink with. But he had perfectly normal relationships with people he saw on a daily basis. There was nothing arrogant. One second. normal relations. There was nothing arrogant or boastful about him. He never made excuses for himself. He spoke slightly uh, slight slight slightly slightly of others. Okay, so he didn't make, he didn't speak bad of others. And just about everybody who knew him liked him. He saw his father no more than once every two or three years. On some matters of, uh, on some matter of business, when the business was over, neither man, okay, wait a minute, every two or three years, on some matter of business, When the business was over, neither man had much to say to each other, thus Tony Takatani's life went by quietly and calmly. I think we're going to go ahead and end it there uh, for today. So, I know that I struggle with words, and I have to think about a word, but I I do finally get it. I do apologize about that. Um, It's just how I've always been, but I think anyone who is... Um, who's reading, who finds a word that is um, challenging for them, they, they work through it or they look it up or something along those lines. But um, yeah, it's weird. I mean, that mindset that you don't need anyone else in your life and you're closed off and everything like that. Um, I mean, I kind of live that way myself. I don't really interact with many people in a, in a face-to-face interaction. I kind of think that's what the internet has done to us. We go to Facebook to find comfort in ourselves through boasting or, or saying things that we have accomplished. 
or asking people certain things, but I feel that 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 person the person interaction is is very fleeting these days. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you didn't, I I do apologize. This is Cypher Deck, aka Michael Lowe, and I'll see you next time.